I'm here to talk about cancer and cancer means many different things to many different people but the reality is that cancer is a disease of age which means it predominantly affects older people and we're all living a lot longer because of general improvements in our standard of living so now one in two people get cancer. As well as age there's many other causes of cancer. People can have family histories leave, and genes that can cause cancers or lead to cancers. Heavy smoking and excessive alcohol consumption, obesity and even having other diseases can lead to the development of cancers and there are environmental hazards as well associated with cancer. Cancers can be rapidly proliferative and very very dangerous and cancers can be very slow growing as well. Often Detecting a cancer earlier is associated with a better outcome. So we have screening programs for diseases such as breast cancer, colon cancer and cervical cancer where we try and detect it in its earlier stages. But cancer means different things to different people. And people use terms such as tumours or neoplasia or uncontrollable growths. It used to have a stigma associated with it, so no one would talk about it. But now, as science advances, our health advances, and we have issues in society that have gone away, people, I think, are much freer to talk about cancer. We can often cure cancers, and some cancers are completely curable. The definition of cure means living to old age and dying of something else. Other cancers, particularly when cancers have spread, are not curable. In those cases, we try and keep the cancers under control so people live with them and don't die from them. And sometimes we use analogies such as diabetes or high blood pressure where people live with these diseases and don't die of these diseases. In terms of treatment of cancer, there's many different types of treatment for cancer. Surgery is really important if it's detected early enough. I specialise in the use of drugs to treat cancers, medicines such as immunotherapies, which don't stimulate the immune system, they inhibit the inhibition of the immune system because cancer can turn the immune system off. Other people use radiotherapy to treat cancers and we describe the combination, for example, of surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, hormonal therapy and all the different types of therapy and surgeries as a multidisciplinary approach where we have a team approach to treating cancer. So even if we can't cure it, the aim is that people live with it for many, many years or longer. The idea is to personalise treatment. That means treating the right person with the right tumour at the right time with the right treatments, which is difficult from one individual to the next. It depends on individual factors, such as what people want for themselves. And it depends on tumour factors, such as whether you can use those treatments, not just to improve quantity of life, but increase quality of life as well. Because having one without another is not very useful. Developments in oncology, though, are occurring at supersonic speed. One reason I became an oncologist was to combine research and patient care to link what we call the bench to the bedside. So nowadays we're talking about personalisation of treatment which means treating the right person with the right tumour with the right time, at the right time with the right treatment. And I think of use of medicines, use of surgery, use of radiotherapy together to try and maximise the cure rate, and even if we can't do that, maximise survival with a good quality of life. But it should be a team approach amongst different doctors and healthcare professionals, along with treating a patient and their family. Something we're doing a lot more of these days with cancer is gene sequencing. Gene sequencing of both the tumour, the cancer itself, and our own bodies, and to understand that interaction. And by unravelling all of the DNA, of our own bodies to try and understand why some cancers occur and unravelling the DNA of the tumour we can use what we call treatment based on 
genes that are abnormal, either in us or the cancer, and we know those treatments are associated with a much better outcome. By targeting treatment in these ways, we can really change the course of cancer. We still sometimes need to use chemotherapy. I sometimes think of a cancer cell, like the London Underground subway tube map, and I'm trying to work out, is it Charing Cross and Victoria that isn't working, or Waterloo, East Acton, Chalk Farm, Camden, and the embankment. And if we work out the subway stations that aren't working, we can use targeted therapies to attack those subway systems or those individual subway stations. Cancer cells are clever and they can find ways around that. They can find different routes. But it's great that we can now use targeted therapies which are much more precise, have fewer side effects, and patients do much better on them. And examples include things like the ALK inhibitors in lung cancer or the anti-PD-1 or anti-PDL-1 immunotherapies. In patients for whom those are suitable, they really have transformed the life of people with cancer such that in the old days people used to die really rapidly from things like metastatic lung cancer and other diseases such as that. Nowadays, based on findings in the laboratory translated into people, we can really transform the lives of these people. So we now expect someone with metastatic melanoma, for example, to live more than five years with these remarkable drugs that aren't just focused on killing the cancer, but are focused on strengthening our own immune systems as well. We like to take a holistic approach, though, to treatment. It's not just about the drugs and the surgery and the radiotherapy. It's really important that patients are fit. They have the right diet. They have the right constitution. So quality of life goes hand in hand with quantity of life. Some cancers, though, don't cause many problems anyway. They can be very, very slow growing. And cancer is a bit of a marketing term. It's used to describe anything from a pancreatic cancer that can spread very rapidly through us, with survivals measurable in months, to a little skin cancer that's never going to cause a problem anyway. And so, going forwards, it's really important, in conjunction with patients and their families, to understand the type of cancer someone has, so you can work out how best to treat it. And if you work out how best to treat it, we're usually prolonging survival as much as possible with a good quality of life. As an oncologist, every day I'm learning. I'm learning about people and their families, and I'm learning about cancer. If the road to really cure cancer is one mile long, we're probably 10 feet into it. I really don't understand how and why cancer spreads, or really, in a disease as simple as breast cancer, why it happens. For example, a woman may have two breasts, usually, the same family history, the same genes, but only one bit of one breast gets cancer, for example. Why that occurs, why it spreads to the locations it spreads in, the pattern of spread that we see, and really why our treatments don't eradicate all cancer cells. Why cancers can recur many, many years later. We know that cancer stem cells can exist, a bit like a queen bee. It can repopulate a nest eight, ten years later. But what we really need to know, and what we really need to understand, is why cancers happen to some people, and how best to treat them, to eradicate them. Because it's still the reality that once a cancer, such as breast, colon, prostate, or lung cancer, the common cancers, once they've spread, we no longer consider them curable. And really, what makes them incurable, why they're incurable and what we can do to increase the cure rate are questions that I ask every single day.